Good evening, Mustang football enthusiasts, and welcome to game two of Friday Night Lights, brought to you by Plum TV and the Plum Mustang Sports Network. Tonight, we come to you from the beautiful Mustang Stadium on the campus of Plum Senior High School in Plum, PA, for a quad A non-conference matchup between the visiting North Hills Indians and your Plum Mustangs. Both the Indians and Mustangs started their seasons with impressive victories away from their home fields. For North Hills, they come into this game with an overall record of 1-0 and also a section record of 1-0. Last week, they defeated the Fox Chapel Foxes in a Quad A Northern 8 Conference matchup by a score of 35-7. The Indians jumped out to a 28-0 lead at the end of the first quarter, and they never looked back from there. North Hills is led by senior quarterback Jake Bruder and senior wide receiver Andrew Bly. They are guided by head coach Pat Carey. For the Mustangs, they come into this game with an overall record of 1-0 and a section record of 1-0. Plum is coming off an impressive 45-19 victory last week against Quad A Foothills Conference foe Hempfield. The Mustangs will be led tonight by senior quarterback Will Fuhrer, sophomore running back Nick Coxon, and junior wide receiver safety Patrick Crossy. The head coach for the Mustangs is Matt Morgan. Good evening, everyone. I am Jake Matolo. Alongside me tonight are my trusted colleagues, Nick Spud Sotovich, Cameron Kutzner, Anthony Lagnis, Maddie Beer Temple, and the real deal himself, head of the Plum TV department and mastermind of the Make a Wish Telethon, Mr. Rick Barat. Okay, guys, we saw an exciting win last week for the Mustangs, and now they get another big test in the North Hills Indians. What kind of approach do you think the Mustangs will have tonight? Mr. Barat, I'll start with you. Well, I mean, North Hills, and I'm friends with their head football coach, Pat Carey. We taught together back in the day in 93-94 uh, at Moon High School. Uh, defensively, he's always played a strong 4-3, so I'm assuming we'll see a lot of that. North Hills is almost um, similar gimmick-wise to the Upper St. Clair teams that Jim Renders always had. They just, they don't do anything flashy, but whatever they do, they just do exceptionally well. They're not going to throw a lot of trickery at you. They're just going to come out and maul a little bit and come straight forward. And this is going to be, I think, hopefully tonight, a really good game. Plum coming off their first quad win outside of the extra game um, that they played on a Wednesday at the end of October last year. Plum had their first quad win in four years, their first win in three years. So this is going to be, hopefully, an exciting game. North Hills just got here. They got here a little late. and. Um, you can see across if uh, Cameron has that shot. We'll zoom out a little bit. Lots of red on the other sideline. So looking forward to an exciting game. This could be, though, a game that North Hills does look over because when, when I talked to Coach Carey, he said that you know they have Butler next week. But after that, the three games they have in a row, Pine Richland, Central Catholic, and I believe maybe N.A. I, th I believe it is N.A. I mean, they have three brutal games after Butler next week. So, um, you know, they pulled all their starters after the first quarter, quarter and a half last week after they had a 28-0 lead on Fox Chapel because they know what's ahead. So uh, hopefully uh, Plum coming off a big victory. Neon night here tonight for the student body. Um, there hasn't been a home win here in three years, so hopefully uh, – We'll be, we'll be able to see a great game. Nick? Um, I think North Hills is going to come out you know, pretty strong with their passing game. Yes. And the D Mustangs are going to have to play strong defense like they did last, did, like they did last week. They have to control the turnovers. They only had one bad turnover last week. It cost them seven points, but they came back and they played strong strong offense with led by Nick Coxon and Will Fear. Anthony, welcome to our broadcast tonight. We missed you last week as Anthony was attending the Pirate game last week. Um, we know where his loyalties rest, right? <laughs> huh? Come on. And your thoughts on tonight's game. What do you expect? Yeah, you guys pretty much summed it up. Coming off a big win last week. I think the um, the success will be led by um, Nicholas Coxon. He had three touchdowns and over 100 yards, and that is my key player for tonight's game. Thanks, guys. And right there was a nice moment of silence for a man with a ton of perseverance, Jeff Boynton, who passed away last year at the young age of 50. They had a moment of silence for him before the game. And a really nice ceremony for him right there as both teams are taking the field here. Right at the same time. Right I've at the never, same time. I've never seen that before. 
And Mr. Barat, we have a good view if uh, Cameron can get the visiting band across from us. I have not seen a band as big as the North Hills band was has been this week. They are a big band. They have special performances at the Rose Bowl before. They played at the inauguration of President Bush back in 2001. So we're going to expect a good matchup even between the marching bands here tonight. North Hills Indians marching band, the Plum Mustangs marching band. As North Hills is heading to their sideline. And Jake, we saw a great band last week also, not only the Plum Band, but Hemfield's band. Spectacular. You know. Yeah, so uh, looking forward to that. And as the Mustangs are ready to take the field. And again, Mr. Broad, as we've seen, and guys, as we've seen from last week, Plum, in terms of depth on their roster, is significantly outnumbered. Plum has a roster number in the high 40s. Uh, North Hills coming in this game, I believe they're in the high 60s in terms of roster. Yes, depth. I mean, this is a this is a small Plum team. Uh, they have to stay healthy as well as they played last week. Four, five, six key injuries. We talk about it, guys, you know, with the Pirates. They lose McCutcheon and Walker and Cole. They lose four or five of their players at one time. It's a, it's a struggle. It so is. it's imperative for Plum to stay healthy. We kind of cringe when, you know, Road Dog and Matt Gatesman, Mike Tardio is here tonight. When these guys run out on the field, we hope it's just like a little minor bump and bruise. You know, last week we saw Crossy cramp up, saw a couple players cramp up. And we know the heat here tonight, guys. It is over 90 degrees. So, um, you know, they have to obviously drink a lot of water. I talked to Dr. Crossy today on the field before the game, and he said they have to drink water, have to stay hydrated, have to stay hydrated. Your Plum Captains today. Plum Captains are brought to you by East Suburban Sports Medicine. Will Fear, quarterback number 11, number 28, Nate Turchik, number 14, Andrew Sox, and the number 64, Eric Trends are your Mustang captains for today's game. Uh, just a little also side note, uh, KDKA, their game of the week this week is in Plum. I believe what we've heard the first time in seven years, the game of the week for KDKA. Any new station in Pittsburgh has been brought to Plum High School for a battle of 1-0 teams, the Plum Mustangs out of the Foothills Conference and the North Hills Indians out of the Northern Eight Conference. This is a non-conference game tonight folks so this will not count against conference record this will be a big win for both teams to build up a resume for the playoffs coming up sure which we is talked not about another that. eight weeks yeah we talked about that in class jake if plum's able to control their own destiny you know win over north hills which might be first second or third in their section if plum's able to beat them tonight you know, that goes a long way to playoff seeding. If Plum does finish, you know, second or third, they might be looking at, at receiving a home playoff game for the first time in I don't know how many years, so. Well, guys, Plum won the toss. They elected to kick to start the game. We will see number 95, Jake Chapla, who had a very impressive game last week, went five for, uh, actually six for six on extra points. Back to return for North Hills. Looks like number three, Andrew Bly, one of our players to watch for tonight's game. He caught the touchdown pass last week against the Fox Chapel Foxes. Here we go, kickoff. It is a squib kick from Chapla. Bly will return it from the four yard line. He's got the outside. He'll be brought down 44, Nick Carlosano there on a nice play on special teams. And we will see the North Hills Indians come on the field led by quarterback number 11, Jake Bruder. Another little search I was finding this week. Bruder was injured last year. He broke his leg in week three against Shaler last year. And he is back this year, and he had a very nice performance at Fox Chapel. Only played one half. To his side is number one, Nick Santucci, the sophomore. And they are going to stop him in the backfield. Nice play right there. We see a number. It's Bill Irvin, number seven, with the play, who had a big game last week getting in the backfield. He was looking good last week. And that was uh, Santucci on the ball carry. 
they will give them a loss of five on the play. It'll be second down and 15 from the 18 yard line. Snap by Bruder, he's gonna do a quarterback draw. He'll keep it and he'll get brought down again. Number 66, Billy Bob Baird there on the tackle. Helmet came off, so he has to come off the field for this third down play. We saw this last week. We thought it was imperative during the Hemfield game, guys, that for Plum to get off the field and stop Hemfield's offense on a three and out. So, and here we go. This is the first big down of the game, third and 15 at the 11 minute mark. Just joining us, North Hills received the kickoff and they have minus five yards as they come under center. Well said, Mr. Barat. Third down and 15, play clock down to five. Snap, Bruder will throw. Bruder has time, he's gonna go deep and he is gonna not oh. find his receiver who was wide open, looked like Kendall Taylor. And he Number broke seven. through the coverage here. I couldn't see who the plum defensive back was. Um, he let up a little bit, but um, boy, if he, if he makes the connection there, it's already six nothing North Hills. But we'll take every break we can get, guys. Absolutely, and football's a long game, as we know, four quarters, and that's just a missed opportunity there for North Hills to get on the board early, but they will have to punt it away. It's another three and out for us by the Plum defense. Looks like Eddie McGonaghy will punt it. Madonna who gets it off, back to receive it is Leighton Quow, who will wave it off, not touch it. It takes a North Hills roll to the 37 yard line. And oh. quickly, we're gonna pause for 10 seconds for station identification on the Plum Mustang Sports Network. Plum Mustang Sports Network and all other affiliates of Plum TV are not responsible for any injuries, spilled beverages, or draw food that could occur in the duration of this broadcast and advises you to eat, drink, and cheer at your own risk. Well, that's where you want to start off. I mean, Woodland Hills started around, what, the 20-yard line, yes. Jake, give or take? I mean, Plum has excellent field position here at the 37, so we'll see what Coach Morgan decides to call here, if they'll come out and try to establish a run like they did last week. Fear is under center. Cross, he was in the backfield. He's motioned to the left. And uh, they will hand it off to the fullback, Turchik, who bolsters up the middle. Maybe right at the 40, guys. Probably a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Correct, give him three yards. Turchik gets the first carry of the night for the Mustangs. Three yards up the middle. Be second down and seven. Interesting play call there, guys. Little quick hitters. They uh, let the rush come in. So give what give, to give North Hills something to think about. Their their defensive line looks huge. They are one of the larger defensive lines in all of Whip. You'll play. Second down and seven. Fuhrer in the pistol. It's a fumbled snap. Fuhrer will fall on the ball all the way back at the 23 yard line. Well, now make it the 25. Well, each team with huge mistakes there. North Hills missing their open receiver on a fly pattern down the middle. And that snap, if you're having a little bit of trouble handling it and he does recover on the 25, but it's gonna be third and 22. Now guys, well, it's a long third down. Not saying it's unlikely they'll convert it, but what would you set yourself here to up to have it like more room to punt the ball? Yeah, I, I, I think I, you know if it was me, I'd try maybe a screen pass or something small, pick up some yardage. Fuhrer will throw. Fuhrer is going to run out of the pocket. He's going to get some yards. He's going to get to the outside. He's at the 40, and Fuhrer is going to oh, jump forward to play. the 45-yard line. Will Fuhrer escapes pressure? Still has to punt, I believe. Boy, it'd be real risky to go for it here. Absolutely, in their own North territory. Hill, yeah, to give North Hills great field position if you don't make it. But uh, I think the safe play to do is, okay, North Hills was, was three plays and out. Plum, three plays and out. Let's punt it and start again. Hopefully Plum can get a good punt here, guys. And uh, Nolan's back to North punt back. for the Mustangs. They gave him pure a 21-yard carry on the play. Back to return for North Hills is Santucci. Nolan will get the punt off. It's a high booming kick. 
and Santucci will return it, and we have a flag on the play. I think we all saw that coming, guys. It looked like an illegal block in the back. Yes, most definitely. On the that, North Hills Indians. And that should, is that five? I can't remember, Jake. Is that five or ten yards in high school? A block in the back, I believe, is ten yards from the spot of the foul. And that occurred right there where the refs threw the flag at the 27. So if it is 10 yards, and I believe it is, as North Hills is just moving way back, uh, they're going to start in almost worse position than they did on their last drive. So it's like we haven't done anything yet at 8-12 left to go in the first quarter. And you're right, Jake. It is 10 yards. And they go back to the 18. Well, now, we see that in the NFL, too, guys. Those penalties, especially on punt returns, which can be avoided, Killers. Not just killers for some yeah, drives sometimes. Killers. Agreed. Okay, we're ready to go. Bruder in the pistol. He'll take the snap. It's going to be a handoff up the middle, and he's going to be stopped up the middle again. It's going to be Turchik on the tackle. That was Santucci again on the ball carry. They'll give him one yard, second down and nine from the 19-yard line. And, guys, Turchik is clogging up these holes. And most of the Mustang linebackers are to start this game here early. It's a good sign to see that. Second down. Good turnout from the North Hills crowd here tonight, about a, say, a half-hour drive from them down here. Shotgun. He'll hand it off. Looks like Santucci in again in the backfield. He was first stopped there by Nate Turchik, the senior captain. That run defense is looking pretty good so far. Stuffing the holes, Anthony. Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw that last week also. A loss of three yards on the play. It's going to be a third down and 12 from the Indians' 16-yard line see what they do here also because they are really far back in their own territory. Play clock down to five. And they are going to hand it off up the middle and he's gonna have some room, but he'll be brought down. That was Santucci again. He's real close. He might be a yard short. And the side umpire is giving the hand signal for fourth down. Right. Turchik again on the tackle there. Two yards short, Jake. Yes. He's at the 26, so it is fourth and two. So Plum forces another three and out. That's the first two drives that were stopped by three and outs by the Mustangs. And Madonna, who is back for the punt. And we have a whistle. Someone on the Mustang line jump. Oh, that would be an automatic first down. Yes. Five yards. It was a late reaction by the referees to throw a flag. We'll see what the call is. Plum's starting to drift back. And he, they're going to call an encroachment on the Mustangs punt team. We don't have a number, but unfortunately, that's going to be a five-yard penalty, and therefore, the five yards added to the last play will make it a first down for the Indians. So back on the field will come quarterback Jake Bruder. Bruder, that's a tough, I'm sorry, Jake, that's a tough penalty. Yeah, I was there. just going to say that a brutal penalty for the Mustangs. Bruder will throw. It is to the outside. It's going to be a catch made on the sideline. Nice play right there, catch by tight end Owen Davis, number 15. Nice pass play right there. Owen Davis had some room, and it'll be another North Hills first down. That penalty kept that North Hills drive alive, and we see that happen uh, that happened against Plum last week also with a couple drives that stayed alive. So um, good for North Hills as they're right at midfield now on the 50. Pass play of 18 yards. Bruder takes the snap. He keeps it. He's going to run to the right side. And he's going to take it himself and be forced out by 81, Patrick Crossy. Game of five. Mustangs looking for a holding call on the offensive line, but they won't get it. It's going to be second down and five. Bruder gets five yards on the carry. We're still seeing Patrick Crossy back at safety. He had a big week last week for the Mustangs, had an interception, had a touchdown.
Bruder in the pistol with Santucci behind him. There's the snap, and he will keep it. Oh, good move. He's gonna move. get to the right Shit. side. That was a good move by Bruder. He is short. It'll be a third down and two coming up for North Hills, and it was a good sidestep move because I believe, guys, I think Bruder would have been tackled for a loss there on that play, but he avoids a tackle and gets by. They'll give him four yards. Nick Robb in there on the tackle for the Mustangs. It'll be a third and inches here for the North Hills Indians. Davis in motion. Bruder takes the snap. He will hand it off. And he will be stopped in the backfield. Santucci loses a couple yards. It'll be 35, Zach Martin. The senior Martin pushes North Hills back two yards, and it's going to be a fourth down and three, and decision time. The quarterback's coming out. Yep, and uh, Mr. Brock, have you heard earlier in the broadcast, very good friends with longtime coach Pat Carey, who is keeping Bruder and the North Hills offense out on the field for fourth down. They're going to go trips to the left. Wonder if he'll try to draw a plum off. Four seconds left, Move three down. seconds left on the 30 second clock. Good call, Mr. Barat. And it was a coach's timeout. Timeout called by Pat Carey. Timeout charged to North Hills. That's their first timeout of the first half. And as we said, guys, uh, North Hills started their season off with a 35 to 7 victory at Fox Chapel High School last week. Got out to a 35-0 lead at halftime, and then took their starters out of the game. Upcoming on North Hill's schedule, they have Butler in their home opener next week. That'll be at 7.30 next Friday at North Hills High School. They play their home games at Mart Martorelli Stadium. And we'll give you a little season results last year. North Hills finished last season with a record of five and five. They went with a record of four and three in section play. They lost their first round game last year to Gateway, 33 to 21. We all know our foe Gateway moved down to AAA in football this year. Lost in overtime last week to Greensburg Salem, nine to six. Correct. So here we go. Coach Carey keeping the North Hills offense out here. Third, fourth down and three. And he's gonna keep it. Bruder's gonna keep short. it and he is gonna be short. What a play right there. He's going to be stopped by 35, Zach Martin. And also, Nate Turchik there on the tackle. Nice play there by the Mustangs. And guys, another big play coming from the defensive side of the football. And it'll force a turnover. And we'll see the Mustang offense out here for the second time this evening. We have 4-16 remaining in our first quarter. We are still scoreless in a non-conference matchup between the North Hills Indians and your Plum Mustangs. What you want to see Plum do, guys, is you want them to get a first down or two because if the defense has to continue coming on the field in this heat, they're going to wear it down by the second half. Looks like tight end Nolan in motion. Fuhrer takes a low snap. He'll hand it off to Coxon, who gets his first carry of the evening, and he's going to get at least seven yards on that carry. And guys, because of the last drive, we weren't able to see Cox him. But first carry of the game, boom, he goes right at the middle and gets seven. I think if uh, I think if you're Plum, I think I continue to run the ball. They had great success last week. I think you're only through three passes, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I can, if you're going to have success like that, run it until they stop it, until they adjust. And Pat Carey, Coach Carey, will do that. As North Hills typically plays a 4-3. Snap by Baird. Coxon will carry. He's this time he's going to be stuffed at the line. The run, eight, so this will be an interesting play call now for the Mustangs. Third and three. Stop, two, Eddie, McDonough. Eddie McDonough with a tackle there. Also punting this evening for the North Hills Indians. They're going to give Coxon one yard on the carry. So that's his wow. second carry. And a generous <laughs> spot <laughs> at that. <laughs> a generous spot at that right there. But nonetheless, we'll it. it's a third down and two for the Mustangs here with three minutes and counting in the first quarter. They have the ball on their own 49 yard line. They need to get to the North Hills 49 yard line. Teeter in motion. They're gonna throw. It's gonna go over the middle. Teeter has got the pass completed. He goes up the middle. Teeter's got the outside. He's at the 40. He's gonna go to the 30. 
and be brought down by 88, Stephen Smith. But a short pass play, first completion of the evening. It goes to Teeter, who gets his first catch of the year. It's gonna go for 20 yards and a Mustangs first down. Little wide receiver screen right there, guys, and a, a well drawn up play. They needed only two yards and they got 20. Coach Parrish just said middle screen, so it's something they've, they've obviously worked on and they saw on film, so as that rush came in. So we we'll see what Plum does here is they're almost in field goal range at the 31. Fears in the pistol with Turchik to his left and Coxon behind him. We've been seeing that a lot. And they're gonna hand it off to Coxon. He'll get some positive yardage. Maybe, maybe two. And Coxon's helmet came off on the play. They'll give him one yard on the play. Coxon has to come out for the play due to the helmet. helmet. So 35 senior Zach Martin, also one of the starting middle linebackers, comes out here. And Turchik comes out of the game as well. Going to be second down and nine. Mustang's going to go with four wide. Looks like Crossy, Fuhr, Crossy and Maher on the right. Nolan now motion to the right and Teeter on the left. Mustangs will throw. Fuhrer's going to go over the middle. Pass completed, but brought down immediately by number two, Eddie Madonna, and number 88, Stephen Smith. That's going to be Crossy with the catch. And right now with Chapla's leg, they are at least in field goal range. That was a good play. Absolutely. Positive yards, they're at the 24. It will be third and three again with running clock, 115 left to go in the first quarter. Just joining us, Indians, Mustangs, tied at zero. But no one in motion again. Fear takes the snap. He's going to throw. He's going to go. And the ball is going to be deflected and batted down. Good play by Fuhrer to bat that ball down. On the play was 66, Drew Schaub. And now we're going to see the Mustangs kicking team come out here for a long field goal attempt. Chapla last week was 6 for 6 on his extra point attempts, and he nailed a 21-yard field goal to give the Mustangs a 10-7 lead at one point last week. They're going to call this a 41-yard attempt. Chapla, it's going to be right down the middle for him. They're lined up in the middle of the field. Cross, he's the holder. Here's the snap. Chapla's kick is up. Chapla's kick is going to be no good. good. Wide right. It was wide right. He had plenty of leg on it. Looked like Pat McAfee out there with the leg right there. Chapla could have made that from 51. Absolutely. But it went over the right post. And no good. So North Hills will have a stop right there. And on that play, North Hills will take over. And due to the no good kick, North Hills will get the ball at the 20 yard line. We have 57 seconds left in this first quarter. We are still scoreless between North Hills and Plum. Bruder in the shotgun. He's going to run to the right, looks to throw. A pass is going to be completed on the sideline, brought down by Soxman and Irvin. It's going to go to number seven, Kendall Taylor. On the stop, for the Mustangs, number 14, Andrew. Second down. So it's going to be second down and one. And he uh, he went out of bounds on that play. Yeah, he did. So it's going to be. Did. He came back for the ball, so that's why. He, when he caught it, Jake, he probably had the first down, but yeah. he came back for it, and then he got pushed out. So. Bruder takes the snap. It's going to be a handoff. And there's going to be a flag on the play. Turchik dragged Santucci down, who's been receiving the majority of the carries this evening. And it's coming back from the head official, so it might be a holding call on North Hills. And if that's going to be from the spot of the foul, Jake, I mean, that hold was probably around the 27-ish. See what the head official calls here. He does call holding on the offense. That'll back North Hills. 10 yards as the penalty is accepted by head coach Matt Morgan. It'll now be second down and 11. Move it back to the 20, so it'll be second and 10. Which yeah, is, correct. Which is the best second down 
that North Hills has had. In this entire game so far. Yes, besides that one, uh, the one series when they crossed midfield. Correct. So again, lots of trips here. Now we see trips to the left. He's gonna throw, he's gonna escape some pressure. Bruder going to the right now, he's going to run and be brought down. 14, Andrew Soxman and 80, Ethan Washington there on the tackle to wrap him up. Now it's gonna be third down and three coming up for North Hills and we will see, we have seven seconds and counting. We'll see if this play gets off and they're going to concede the quarter right here. After our first quarter here, at Plum Mustangs Stadium in Plum, PA. We have a good matchup of two undefeated teams. And we've seen a good one so far. Defensive game so far. Our score after one quarter is the North Hills Indians zero. And your Plum Mustangs zero. We will be right back and we'll do a quick station identification here on the Plum Mustangs Sports Network. This telecast is copyrighted by the Plum Mustang Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the express written consent of the Plum Mustang Sports Network and Plum TV is strictly prohibited. Welcome back to Mustang Stadium here as I welcome one of my trusted colleagues, Matty Beer Temple, to the mic. Matty, your thoughts after that first quarter? Well, I think it's looking pretty evenly matched. As we can tell, it's still nothing, nothing. And I think the team is going to be pretty consistently against each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Matty. Third down and two. Bruder was willing to throw, and it's going to be incomplete. Pass intended for 15, Owen Davis. 81, Patrick Crossy there on the coverage. And it will be another three and out for the North Hills Indians as it's fourth down and two from their own 28-yard line. And another big stop right there for the Mustangs. Crossy will be back for the Mustangs, and punting for the fourth time today will be Eddie McDonough. And we see a man from the North Hills Indians run off the field on that last play. And you cannot have 12 men on the field. That is a flag. It'll be five yards against the Indians, and now it'll be backed up to the 23 yard line, fourth down and seven. I'd also like to welcome to the headsets for his first time, Logan Carney. Great to have you here, Logan. Your thoughts after that first quarter as well. Well, the Mustangs have play, been playing really good run defense from what I've noticed. A couple mishaps on the passes, but they've been playing great defense so far for the first half, for the first quarter. Thank you, Logan. Madonna will punt it. It's going to be a line drive kick. Wow will wave it off, and rightly so, as it takes a North Hills bounce. It will be down by 20, Alex Carmody. And here comes the Mustang offense back on the field. Last possession ended in a missed field goal by Chaplow's from 41 yards. It's his first miss of the year. And I'd like to mention, welcome back this week to number 71, Jake Tessick, the right tackle. He missed last week due to a concussion. Mike Caragino filled in for his spot. He did a fantastic job last week at the right tackle position. Here we go, first and 10 from the Mustangs 34 yard line. Looks like Nolan and Marr are out wide to the left of Fuhrer. And Crossy and Teeter are to Fuhrer's right with Coxon in the backfield. Crossy's in motion to the left. They're in the pistol. Fuhrer's going to throw. He has time. Fuhrer's gonna go deep. He's gonna look for Teeter. And it is going to be incomplete in and out of the hands by Brandon Wagner. The defensive back for the North Hills Indians. It was intended for Teeter. And guys, first play of the second quarter for the Mustangs. They're taking a chance right there. Will was shooting off his arm strength there. Easy, that's a completion. That can easily be a touchdown. I'd just like to touch on what you said about Jake being back. Since 
since I, I'm on the soccer team, so since having soccer practice right after football, mm -hmm. I saw Jake, you know, getting some reps, like practicing, getting him right back, uh -huh. and he looked fantastic out there in practice. Perks of having the turf after the football field practices. Logan Carney here plays for the Plum Varsity soccer team. Hand off to Nick Coxon up the middle. He'll get some positive yardage. They're going to give him two. So it's going to be a third down and eight coming up for the Mustangs. Ball will be on their 36 yard line. Mustangs coming in a pistol set. They have four wide. Nolan and Crossy are off the line. Crossy's in motion to the left. Here takes the snap, third down and eight. He's gonna throw, a little bit of pressure. He'll throw a wobbly throw. That'll be incomplete, intended for 85, Zach Nolan. The fans are looking for interference. And it was a close call right yeah. there on a pass interference, but they're gonna give the benefit of the doubt to the 88, Steven Smith with the coverage right there for the Indians, and it'll be fourth down, and we will see another punt here from the Mustangs. Back to punt for North, back to receive for North Hills will be Andrew Bly and Brandon Wagner. And back to punt for the Mustangs is Zach Nolan. There's the snap, and it's gonna be a nice line drive kick to Bly, and the ball is fumbled. But it is picked up by Bly. The ball is live after it's touched on a punt. Kevin Brown there as well. And here comes North Hills back on the field for another drive. North Hills in their red and white away jerseys this evening. The Mustangs in their home black and purple jerseys with their new white helmets. North Hills coming to this game with an all-time school record in football of 467 wins, 276 losses, and 27 draws. Handoff will go to the wide receiver, Bly, but he'll be stopped. Looks like 35, Zach Martin with a tackle. And it'll be second down coming up for the North Hills Indians. They'll give Bly two on the wide receiver sweep. Let's give a little hand for the Plum cheerleaders pump, trying to pump up the crowd. I agree, Logan. They're doing a fantastic job this evening. Don't worry, Jake. You'll get the hand movements down eventually. <laughs> Bruder will take the snap, and it's going to be a fake play for Bly. But waiting right there for him is 24, Nick Robb, with a fantastic play not to commit early. And he's there to make the stop. And Bly only gets three yards on the carry. It'll be third down and five coming up for North Hills. Yeah, Plum's defense has really been everywhere tonight and the Indians don't look like they're being getting too much yard yardage as of recently. I agree, Matty. Three of the four North Hills drives have resulted in three and outs. The other being the turnover on downs. They were stopped on fourth down and three earlier in tonight's matchup. Play clock down to three. Bruder will take the snap. He's going to throw. He is going to be hit. Bruder will still throw, and it's going to be incomplete. It went through Andrew Soxman's hands, the corner, and went in and out of the receiver, Kendall Taylor, for North Hills. That was number seven, Kendall Taylor. And the Mustangs forced their fourth, third, their fourth three and out against the North Hills Indians. And it'll be another punt, the fifth of the day, coming up for Eddie Madonna. Back to return for the Mustangs will be 18, Jason Hubner and 81, Patrick Crossy. Low snap on the kick, and then it's a booming kick. Hubner will let it bounce, go in Mustang territory, and it's downed 
by number 31, Dan Connolly. Good punt there by McDonough. Mustangs are pushed back into their own territory at around the 16 yard line. And we're gonna have an official's timeout right here. Yes, folks, we're gonna have a media. We're gonna have a media timeout here for a quick break. Give us a second to go through some different facts about North Hills High School, North Hills has the area of Ross Township and Westview. That is what North Hills High School is composed of. Uh, some notable alumni from North Hills is a former safety for the Buffalo Bills, Mark Kulsko. Larry Zibzisko, former WWE professional wrestler is from North Hills High School. And a big guy, you probably know his name, he's one of the better products to come out of Western PA football, especially the Pittsburgh area. LeVar Arrington, the former linebacker, attended Penn State, was the former Gatorade All-America Player of the Year back in the senior year of high school. He is a three-time All-Pro and a three-time Pro Bowler. He played five years for the Washington Redskins and a year for the New York Giants. Currently, LeVar is on NFL Network. He hosts a show called okay. NFL AM. And that's your quick facts here of the North Hills Indians brought to you by Coke. Fuhrer will take the snap and it's gonna be Turchik up the middle who gets a good chunk of yards there on the carry. Number 28, Nate Turchik on the carry. They'll give Turchik five yards to the 21. Second down and five. We'd like to give you a quick reminder too to stay tuned for us at halftime. We will see both marching band performances. The North Hills Indians will go first. Then your own Plum Mustangs marching band will perform their halftime show. Low snap, Fuhrer will pick it up and get stuffed in the backfield. It's the second time today we've seen a low snap to Fuhrer and has, it has not come at the right time of the game. Loss of a It'll be a five yard loss. Looks like that'll make it a third and 10 at the 16. So it's gonna be a third down and 10 from the 16 yard line. Deer in the pistol and they're gonna throw. Fuhrer has plenty of time. He's gonna escape from the right and try to get brought down, but Fuhrer will keep it. Fuhrer is going to try to run, try to get some positive yards on the play. He escaped about five North Hills Indians defenders. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, but nonetheless, it's gonna be fourth down and 10 coming up for the Mustangs. They'll have to punt it away to the Indians once again. Nevertheless, still a good escape by Will Fuhrer. Absolutely. That play could have been a lot worse than, than it was. Fuhrer escaped. I agree, Logan. He escaped pressure around the one yard line. Looked like he was going to get brought down, but he escaped it. And actually, the scorekeepers here will give Fuhrer a yard on the carry. Nolan will punt it away to Bly. Bly will get a return from the 40 yard line. He's going to escape through the middle, and he'll be brought down to the 50 yard line, a return of 10 for Andrew Bly as we get a stoppage of play as we are set for another drive coming up here for the North Hills Indians. You are watching Plum Mustangs football on Plum TV and the Plum Mustangs Sports Network. I'm Jake Matolo here alongside me with, on a headset, Anthony Lagnese, Logan Carney, and Matty Beer Temple. Along with us in the booth, we have the real deal himself, Mr. Rick Barat, Nick Spud Satovich, and also Cameron Kutzner with us this evening. North Hills will start at midfield. Bruder is in the shotgun. They're gonna have a motion play and it will be for the receiver Bly and he's gonna try to find some yardage. He'll be brought down by Turchik. And, and oh my goodness, he was not brought down with a knee 
and it is going to be a touchdown North Hills. There's a flag. There is a flag on the play after the touchdown. I thought he was brought down by a knee at the 48 yard line. But they ruled his knee did not touch the ground. From there, Bly got up and took it into the end zone for a North Hills touchdown. Matt Morgan is not liking the call. Neither is the fans either. And neither are the fans. And after the play, it was an unsportsmanlike conduct. So it'll be a 15 yard penalty for the Mustangs favor on the kickoff. It is a touchdown for Andrew Bly. It was a carry, a 50 yard carry. Snap is up, kick is up, kick is good. By number 20, looked like 28, correct? Yeah, Jacob, Jacob Siller there on the extra point kick. And it was a cruel way to get seven points, but nonetheless, North Hills will take a seven to nothing lead on the Mustangs here with 6.19 left in the first quarter. Guys, from last week to this week, and Matty, you were with us at the broadcast last week, we saw some very crazy plays that we've never seen before, and I have not seen a play like that in a very long time. It's gotta be really unlucky. Brought him down, but brought him down on top of him and not on the ground. Now guys, the Mustangs are pretty ticked right now. And we can all see it on their faces from the fans and the coaching staff. So, and uh, North Hills will move the kickoff up to the 45 yard line due to the penalty on the touchdown. So they'll kick it from the 45. Kicking off is Aaron Collins for North Hills. And will be huge to get a big return here. Oh, my question I was gonna ask you guys, do you think this lights a fire under the Mustangs right now, maybe gets them going a little bit more? Well, if I was on the field, it'd definitely light a fire under me if that answers your question. Here's the kickoff coming up by Collins. It's gonna be deep and way out of the end zone. So therefore, it'll be a touchback. Mustangs will get the ball on the 20-yard line. Thanks to our sponsors, Farmers Insurance, Simmons Insurance Agency. Make sure you call 724-244-5796. That's 724-244-5796. Farmers Insurance, we are farmers. One last reminder here with 619 left in our first half of play. North Hills leading Plum 7 to nothing. Stay tuned at halftime for the Mustang and Indians marching band sphere is going to throw. He'll throw to the outside. It's going to be caught and dropped. 81 cross. He had caught the ball, but he got jarred on a hit by Eddie McDonough and it'll be second down and 10 coming up for the Mustangs. As I was saying, stay tuned at halftime for both marching band performances and watch your Plum Mustangs marching band in action at home for the first time this season. North Hill student section getting into it a little bit. On the opposite side of us, they have a good student body turnout here at Plum. Five on the clock, Fuhrer will hand it off. Looks like Kevin Brown, he has some room. He'll get up the middle and he'll get to the 26 yard line. Give Brown six yards, good gain. It'll be a third down and four coming up for the Mustangs. A 
I think the Mustangs are really eager to get a touchdown or at least some more yardage, especially since they had a huge start at the Hempfield game with a touchdown on the first possession. Absolutely, Maddie. They are dying for a score here. They've been depleted of points here to start today's game with 5.03 left in our first half. It's going to be a third down and four coming up. Low snap. Fuhrer will have time. He'll throw to the outside. It is caught. No, it is not. It, well, it is caught, but it is out of bounds. Teeter did not get a foot down in play. So it's going to be a fourth down and four coming up for the Mustangs. And then they will bring out punter Zach Nolan and the punt team. Beautiful pass by Will Fuhrer. Just like, unlucky enough for Teeter not to get his foot down on the sideline. And a whistle has been blown. Timeout, North Hills. Are you seeing the punter, perhaps? They could be Logan. Who knows? <laughs> We've seen we have seen crazier things in football. And icing the punter could be one of them. Although, <laughs> although we do not have any info from Pat Carey's coaching schemes across there from North Hills Indians. Don't give us any credit. We are just a bunch of high school students broadcasting this game on the local cable station. We are not receiving information from anybody on the North Hills side here this evening. As it was a timeout by North Hills, they have two left. We have 5.08 left in this first half of play. The Mustangs are trailing the Indians seven to nothing. And as we've seen, guys, it's, football's a long game. We have plenty of time left in this game. Nolan will punt, and I've seen great punts tonight here. It is fair caught by Wagner. So North Hills will get the ball at the 35 yard line. First down and 10 coming up for the Indians. As you hear in the background, Mr. Andy Sebastian, the legend in his 31st year of public address announcing home games for the Plum Mustangs here at Mustang Stadium. His son, along with my uncle, were on the last football team to win a WPIL title in Plum back in 83. Handoff will go up the middle to number one, Santucci. Looks like he'll get two yards. And we're going to give you a score update right now from section play brought to you by the Plum Cheerleaders. In section play, Altoona Lions are currently leading the McKeesport Tigers, who are ranked fourth in the Whitfield, 10 to nothing. That is in the second quarter of play. Second down and seven. Ball on the 22 and a half yard line, so it's gonna be second down and seven. Bruder will throw. He's gonna throw the outside pass. is going to be completed to Kendall Taylor. His second catch of the day. He'll get into Indians or into Mustangs territory at the 45 yard line. And it'll be a big first down for the Indians. Taylor just getting by the Mustangs defenders there. Sneaking away, making a good catch and good yardage for the for North Hills. Ball on the 45-yard line. line in Mustangs territory. Bruder will throw. Bruder is looking deep. He's going to go deep, and he is going to look for his receiver. It is Kendall Taylor again, and he is in the red zone at the 15-yard line, a completion of 30 yards. And this is the first time either team has reached the Heinz red zone. This is the Heinz red zone. Make sure you pick up your thick and rich Heinz ketchup anywhere ketchup is sold. And Matt Morgan and the Mustangs defense are going to take a timeout right here. Clock is frozen at 346. Remaining in our first half of play, our current score, North Hills Indians 7 and the Plum Mustangs 0. And 
when you watch this telecast, folks, the pit game will have already been over. We are going to give you a quick update of the pit game. They are currently in the second quarter. They are trailing Boston College 7-3. to three. Currently, James Conner has eight carries for 75 yards, and Chad Boyd took the quarterback for Pitt Panthers is two of seven for six yards and an interception. In the world of Pittsburgh sports this weekend, if you consider Penn State a Pittsburgh team, they are in Happy Valley taking on the Akron Zips. West Virginia is at home against Towson. That might be a blowout. And the Pittsburgh Steelers play their season opener against those Browns from Cleveland. And Johnny Football, who will not start for the Cleveland Browns, will be Brian Hoyer, the future Tom Brady. Kendall Taylor in motion. It's going to be a first down and 10 from the 15. And they're going to run with the quarterback, Bruder, but he will be stopped by number 85, Zach Nolan, with his first tackle on the day. It is neon night here for the Plum student section. Second down and eight from the 13. Bruder will keep, Bruder will throw. He's gonna go over the middle. Pass is going to be completed to Brandon Wagner and it's gonna be a North Hills Indians touchdown. First touchdown pass of the day for Jake Bruder and the first catch of the evening for Brandon Wagner. And it is a 13 yard touchdown completion and it'll extend this North Hills lead to two possessions barring the extra point coming here from Jacob Siller. Holder is number eight, Jake Ellis said. Snap, hold, kick is up. Kick is going to be good. Nice catch on the ball by the North Hills marching band out there. Who we, who we will see in three minutes as with 3.01 remaining in this first half, the North Hills Indians are leading your Plum Mustangs 14 to nothing. We've seen a close game through the first half last week in Hempfield, but then the Mustangs broke away with their great offense they have. And guys, any thought, we're gonna see probably the two minute offense coming up here. So, are we expecting short pass plays, long pass plays, or they just might shoot the gun here and keep running the ball, Logan? Well, North Hills has done a good job of stopping the run so far in this game. Well, both teams have done a good job of stopping the run throughout this game. And it's been the pass game that's been working out for both teams on getting yardage and obviously getting touchdowns uh, for North Hills. I expect to see a couple, a bunch of short passes here, hopefully to get down in the end zone with 301 remaining in the game. I agree, Logan. And, and with the Pitt update, Pitt, you know, Chad Boytick just threw a touchdown, his first of the season. Pitt leads 10 to seven against Boston College now. Pittsburgh product Tyler Boyd caught the touchdown pass for the Pitt Panthers who is truly the Pittsburgh college team. Kickoff coming up here from 16, Aaron Collins. It'll be his second of the day. And it is off, deep to return. Who will get it is 14, Andrew Soxman, one of the defensive captains for this team, who leans forward and gets to the 22 yard line, a little pushing and shoving after the play. Couldn't tell who the number was. Mustangs will come out on the field at the 20 at their own 23 yard line. They have two timeouts remaining and have 255 remaining on the clock. Mustangs trailing the North Hills Indians 14 to nothing currently. Still enough time to at least get three points up on the board. off up the middle. That's Coxon up the middle. He'll get some good yardage. Mustangs continuing to run the ball here. They're gonna get to the 26, I believe. It's gonna be second down. No, give it to the 27. It'll be second down 
and six coming up, 2.30 and counting. Little, little, oh, I'm sorry, Maddie, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I think the Mustangs just need to get a short, quick burst to get some more yardage, and hopefully that'll set some momentum. Carry with Turchik on the middle, ball's loose. The ball is loose. Turchik carried it up the middle, the clock will stop. They're gonna see who has the ball. Turchik looked like he got the first down, but then he was stripped of the ball. The Mustangs have the football. That's a big break for the Plum Mustangs. They deserve a break after the plays we've seen this evening. So it's gonna be Turchik who will get five yards on the carry. It's gonna be third down and one. Mustangs need a yard here for the first down. It'll be a handoff to Turchik who goes up the middle. The ball is loose again, and it is recovered by four. Brandon Wagner, as he goes out of bounds, they give the ball to Turchik again, who tried to leap over the pile, but he was yet again stripped of the ball, and this time, unfortunately, Brandon Wagner recovers the fumble. He's had a big night so far. North Hills will be set up at the 21 yard line. I haven't done research on their kicker. There wasn't very many research. I don't know his leg. I was hoping Logan Carney, the soccer player, might know if he plays soccer or anything, but they're from North Hills. We don't play them that much. Bruder's in the shotgun. First down and 10 from the 21 yard line. There's the snap, Bruder will run to the left. He's gonna look to throw, he's gonna avoid a tackler. He's gonna be throwing incomplete. It was intended for the tight end Aaron Collins, also the kicker. For number 46 out there. No, correction, that's 46, that's my fault, folks. 46, Ben Walter was the intended receiver. I got 46 and 16 mixed up. They will motion to the left. Bruder will keep, and he's going to go up the middle, but he's going to be stuffed by the Mustangs. Mustang defensive line gets in there. I saw 28 Turchik, 35 Martin, 64 Eric Trends, and also I think I see 66 in there too. That's Billy Bob Baird. Clock is stopped. It's gonna be a third down and 11 coming up for the North Hills Indians. Guys, it's a longer third down. Do you expect them to run here and maybe get some more field goal range or do you expect them to pass play here on third down and 11? I expect a, I expect a short run to try and at least maybe take off a couple seconds more of the clock and then try and kick a field goal on fourth down. Play clock down to two and Jake Bruder is going to take a timeout for the North Hills. That'll be their second of the half. They have one remaining as the clock is frozen here with 48.2 seconds left. I just wanted to mention on the offensive side, number 23, Ashton Teeter, um, he runs track and he was also a key part of the four by 100 meter race team, relay team this year, he did very well. One of many two sport athletes on the football team. Thank you, Maddie, Ashton Teeter has a lot of speed. I've seen it from playing baseball. I know Anthony to my left has seen Teeter run a little bit. He's a very quick kid. We've seen yeah, a lot of fast run. kids, but Ashton Teeter's a really fast kid. One of the fastest I've seen. 48 Here we go, third down and 11 from the Mustangs 22 yard line for the North Hills Indians. They have 48 seconds remaining. There's a snap, Bruder's gonna throw on third down. He's gonna go for the end zone. He's gonna look in the corner, but it's gonna be overthrown and out of bounds for Brandon Wagner. It's gonna bring up a fourth down and 11 from the 22. And decision time here for Coach Pat Carey. Is he gonna leave his offense out in the field or is he gonna try for a field goal attempt here? 
and they will try for a field goal here. The kicker is 28, Jacob Siller. Eight, Jake Elsade will be the holder. The kick here is gonna be a 39 yard attempt. This is to put the North Hills Indians up by three scores. There's the snap, the hold. The kick is going to be up and the kick will be good. Fantastic kick right there by Jacob Siller. Fantastic job right there by the Indians and off the turnover, they get three points. 36.2 seconds left, the Mustangs have two timeouts remaining. Our score is the North Hills Indians 17 and the Mustangs zero. We're gonna pause 10 seconds for station identification here on the Plum Mustang Sports Network. This telecast is copyrighted by the Plum Mustang Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast or of any other pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without express written consent of the Plum Mustang Sports Network and Plum TV is strictly prohibited. And we mean it, folks. It is prohibited. We'll see the kick here by 16, Aaron Collins. Last time we put this one right through the uprights. Yeah, he was, yeah, you're right, Logan. He was kicking it from the 45-yard uh, line due to the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the North Hills touchdown to put him up 7 nothing. North Hills student section definitely making their presence known. Absolutely. It's tough to hear the Mustang student section from this angle, but they've been loud as well tonight. Kick off. It's going to be a deep one, but it's going to bounce before it gets to Soxman. With a nice return on the nice kick last time. He's going to get up the middle. Soxman puts the Mustangs at the 27-yard line with 30 seconds remaining in this first half of play. The Mustangs will get the ball on the kickoff to start the second half. Soxman carrying. It is a hot evening here at Mustang Stadium in Plum, PA for a non-conference quad A matchup between the Plum Mustangs and the North Hills Indians, a battle of 1-0 teams. Fuhrer is in the pistol, and they're going to hand it off to Cox and on the outside. He gets positive yardage to around the 31-yard line. It's going to be second down and four, second down and six. And we'll see as the Mustangs are going to let the clock run out on this first half. And that is the end of our first half. After the first quarter of play here, we had no score, but the North Hills Indians put up a 17 in the second quarter, and the Mustangs put up another zero. We have a well-battled defensive game here. Plenty of game left here, folks. It is a close one right now at halftime. It is the North Hills Indians 17 to the Plum Mustangs zero. Stay tuned for both halftime band performances. They will see the North Hills Indians marching band performance first, and then we will see your Plum Mustangs marching band second. Stay tuned, we will be back with our halftime report after the bands are finished.
The band marches around the field, pulling a symbol down for them, and then he becomes king. The students quickly go flying on the roof to form their dancing floor to the Lion King. They just can't wait to be king.
In his 1965 hit, written by Kate Seeger and performed by the Birds, Turn, Turn, Turn. Welcome back to Mustang Stadium here in Plum, PA, as we are back for our halftime report here. So far through the first half, so far through the first half, Mustangs are currently losing to the North Hills Indians by the score of 17 to nothing. At this time, we're gonna do a little bit of this day in history. It's gonna be brought to you by Robert Morris University. Logan Carney, take away our This Day in History. This Day in History. In 1698, Russia's Peter the Great imposed a tax on beards. In 1877, Seahawks... Su Chi Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse was killed by the bayonet of a U.S. shoulder, a soldier. The chief allegedly resisted confinement to a jail cell. In 1882, the first U.S. Labor Day parade was held in New York City. Very interesting. In 1914, Little Sports, Babe Ruth hit his first home run as a professional player in the International League. Yes, he did. In 1939, 
the U.S. proclaimed its neutrality in World War II. And we know that neutrality didn't last long because on December 7th, 1941, uh, the Japanese attacked uh, Pearl Harbor. Therefore, the United States entered World War II. Continue with this day in history. Thank you, Jake, with all your interesting facts. In 1958, the first color videotaped program was aired. It was The Betty Freezer Show on WBTV TV in Charlotte, North Carolina. I have all the Betty Freezer Show's DVDs on VHS. Very interesting. Doesn't, make, to, doesn't need, make any sense, but... I, I need to come over to the Carney household and watch that as soon as possible. Congratulations. Let's watch some football. In Let's 1960, football. Cassius Clay, my boy Muhammad Ali, of Louisville, Kentucky, won the gold medal in light heavyweight boxing at the Olympic Games in Rome, Italy. And, and now we just have our special birthday shout-outs today. Happy birthday to Pirates Hall of Fame second baseman Bill Mazeroski. He's a native of Tiltonsville, Ohio, just west of Steubenville. The Burb of the Burg, as is also Steubenville is known as. We'd like to wish a happy birthday to Pittsburgh native Michael Keaton, otherwise known as Batman. He turned 63 today. He went to Montour High School. And we'd like to wish a happy birthday to one-year pirate catcher Rod Barajas. He turned 39 today and was a career 2-11 hitter with the Pirates. And what a year he had in Pittsburgh. We'll never forget it was the second collapse in 2012 for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Man, was he fun to watch. Oh, man, guys. Thanks, Logan, for helping me out with that. We are going to start the second half of play on Plum TV and the Plum Mustang Sports Network, Plum Football Mustangs trailing North Hills to start the second half 17 to nothing. I'm Jake Matolo here with Logan Carney, Cameron Kutzner on a headset with me as well, Anthony Lagney's on the camera, Matty Beer Temple with us this evening, Nick Spudsatovich and the real deal himself, the valuable mind behind the Make-A-Wish Telethon, Mr. Rick Barat. We're going to start the second half of play. North Hills will kick it off to the Mustangs. Mustangs will receive the ball because they elected to kick off to start the first half. The North Hills student section is bouncing on the other side, and the Mustang student section is also loud as we get ready to start our second half of play. That's an understatement, Jake. I agree, Cam. They have been loud all night. They're so loud, loud I can barely hear them. It's ridiculous. Aaron Collins will kick off. It goes deep. Returning is going to be Soxman from the five-yard line. He's going to get a hold of the outside. Soxman has some room up the middle. There's a flag on the play, but Soxman is going to get to the 43-yard line of North Hills for now, but there is a flag. We will see what the penalty will be. Looks like it's on the Mustangs as they're walking down towards obviously on the flag side of the field. I missed the call there. What was the call there, Logan? It was on the Mustangs. This was holding okay. on Number number 18, Jason Huebner. So that'll push the Mustangs back to the 17 yard line. So it's going to be first down and 10 for the Mustangs from the 18-yard line. There's a snap. Fuhrer fakes a handoff. Fuhrer's going to look over the middle. He's going to find the hands of Patrick Crossy, but it's going to be incomplete, but there is a flag on the play. Coverage there by 88, Stephen Smith. It was a flag in the secondary. We'll see what the call is going to be. It's going to be pass interference on the North Hills defense. It'll be an automatic first down for the Mustangs. It 
and it will move the ball up to the 33-yard line. It's a 15-yard penalty for defensive pass interference. So big first down there for the Mustangs and the pass interference penalty. Fuhrer takes the snap, it's a handoff for Coxon up the middle. Coxon will find a hole and get to around the 41 yard line. That's a gain of eight for Cox and a big hole up the middle for him. It's gonna be second down and two. I'd like to welcome to the headset right now, Nick Spud Satovich. Quickly, just for one moment here, what were your thoughts on North Hills offense in the first half? North Hills offense, they were doing pretty good. They've been moving the ball pretty well. And that, if it wasn't for that one play where Everyone thought he was down, but he was like, well, we don't know. Right. We, we don't want to get into that right now. Right. But if it wasn't for that, that, that changed the game. That was momentum. Absolutely. Changed, just completely took the sails out of the Mustangs. Fear will hand it off. Coxon up the middle. He'll keep going. Plenty of leg room for him. He goes through the hole. It's going to be a Mustangs first down. Give Coxon four yards on the carry. Mustangs are now at their own 45 yard line. It'll be first down and 10. Just on the way here in the second half of play. North Hills Indians leading the Mustangs 17 to nothing. Mustangs doing a good job of moving the chains so far in the first drive of the half. It's their, third for, it's their second first down of the drive. They have a pass interference penalty. And also they had two runs straight right there by Coxon, and they'll give it to him again as he goes through the hole. Coxon's gonna stay on his feet, and Coxon will get at least five, give him six. It'll be second down and four. Mustangs are in North Hills Indians territory. It's the 49 yard line. Fear takes the snap and the pistol. Another handoff to Cox, and Cox will get to the outside, but he will be stuffed in the backfield by number 35, Joey Tomasic. He will lose some yardage there, and it'll bring up third down here for the Mustangs. Coxon's helmet came off on the play, so he will need to be replaced. It'll be third down and eight from the Mustangs 47 yard line. Fear in the shotgun, takes the snap. He's going to throw, there's a flag on the play. The pass will be incomplete. Intended for 85, Zach Nolan. There was a flag right after the snap. And the Mustangs offense is staying on the field right now. It's gonna be an illegal formation on the Mustangs. The penalty is declined. And it will now be fourth down and eight coming up for the Mustangs. And they're gonna send the punt team out. There's a snap back to Nolan. Nolan will boot this deep. And the return will get North Hills to around the 28-yard line. That return was by number three, Andrew Bly, who scored the first touchdown of the evening for the North Hills Indians. We are gonna pause 10 seconds for identification here on the Plum Mustang Sports Network. Welcome back, North Hills will start their drive from the 28 yard line, it's gonna be first down and 10. 
Bruder will take the snap. He'll fake the handoff. Bruder will throw. It's to the outside to Davis, the tight end. Davis catches his second ball of the evening. It's a catch of nine yards. Soxman was there on the tackle. It's going to be second down and around one. North Hills lining up with three ride receivers to the right. Bruder is in the pistol formation. There's the snap. Fakes the handoff. Bruder will keep it. Nolan missed a sack. Bruder will try to run. And Bruder will inch his way closer. I don't know if he got the first down. Good pressure there by 85. Zach Nolan. It is not enough. It's going to be a third down and one. And now the referees are ruling in a first down. It's been changed from a third and in inches to a first down for North Hills. They get the ball now at the 38 yard line. First down and 10 coming up. And it's gonna be a screen pass for Bly and He'll be staying in bounds. The referee ruled him out of bounds. At the 47 yard line, he'll be short of a first down. That's Bly for nine yards. And it'll be a second down and one. Just a quick pit update. The Pitt Panthers are leading the Boston College Eagles at halftime by the score of 20 to seven. Blue it hit a field goal at the end of the half to extend Pitt's lead to 13 points. Snap. He will throw. Avoids pressure. He's going to go deep to the sideline. It is incomplete. Bruder's pass was intended for North Hill's leading receiver this evening, Kendall Taylor. It's going to be a third down and one for North Hills. They got to get to their 48 yard line. They are at their 47. Third down. This will be a big stop here for the Mustangs to try to force a punt here for North Hills. They're going to carry it up the middle. It's going to be a first down for Santucci to the Mustang 49 yard line in Mustang territory. 8.04 and counting left in this third quarter of play. Score right now is Indians 17, Mustang 0. We're going to see a little bit here, guys. The Indians trying to burn some clock here, especially running the ball. We've been seeing that a little bit here, Logan. It's, it's a good approach to start the half when you're up by 17. Well, the running the ball has been pick it up for both teams in around the second quarter. Handoffs, Santucci gets to the 45, tackled by Crossy and Bill Irvin, and give credit to number 70 on the tackle as well as Mike Simboli. Give Santucci four yards, it's gonna be second down and six. North Hills has seemed to quiet this Mustang crowd who was very active in the first half. Mustangs will look for a big play here. Handoff, and there's your big play. Nick Poprocky gets into the backfield and takes down Santucci. It's gonna be a loss of five on the play and it's gonna be a third down and 11 and there's a big play right there. Nick Poprocky with the tackle for loss. It'll be a third down and 11 coming up for the North Hills Indians. Go, 
Big third down here for the Indians. They're gonna have two wide to the left and they're in a pistol formation. Bruder takes the snap, he's gonna throw a screen pass and it was tipped behind the line of scrimmage and picked up by Wagner. That's technically a run play because the ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. It was a live play and tipped at, tipped at the line by a Mustang defensive lineman. But he's taken down the, in the backfield for a loss of six and it's gonna be a fourth down and 17 and a big stop from the Mustangs defense here, guys, as they're gonna get the ball back here with 5.45 and counting left in this third quarter play. Back to punt is to McDonough. And it's gonna be returned here by Crossy. Crossy's gonna sidestep someone. And he's gonna get to around the 35 yard line. We have a flag on the play. Good catch, Logan. The side judge has thrown the flag, which usually is not a good sign for the returning team. We'll see what the head official calls here. For now, the Mustangs will be at their own 35-yard line. Head referee asking Matt Morgan a question, which could possibly mean a penalty on North Hills. Well, after the play, I saw number 12, I believe it was Matt Reiner, going up to the referee and complaining. Now, what he was complaining about is wrong. Oh, it looks like it is on the Mustangs, actually. It is on the Mustangs, it is. I don't know what the flag was or the signal the referee gave. So I don't know about that, folks. But the Mustangs will be backed up a good bit of yards. And the ref just gave a signal again to the booth. It was an illegal block in the back on the Mustangs. It backs them up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. But the Mustangs will retain possession of the football. There's 529 remaining in this third quarter of play. The Mustangs trailing by 17. If you're in the pistol, Mustangs are on their own 12. Turchik in motion. There's the snap, handoff for Coxon. He's got a hold of the outside. Coxon goes up the middle. He has enough for the first down and a little bit more. Give him 14 yards on the carry. Mustangs will go to their 26 yard line. It's gonna be a first down for the Mustangs. Alex Thomas on the stop for North Thomas Hills. Thomas with the stop for North Hills. And on next carry by Coxon, it's a Mustang first down. They'll give him 13 to the 25, first down and 10 for the Mustangs, 13 yard carry by Coxon to start this drive. We're gonna have a whistle here. Timeout North Hills, that's their first charge timeout of the second half. Five oh seven remaining in this five oh seven remaining in this third quarter of play. Our score right now is North Hill seventeen and the Mustangs zero. Mustangs driving here to start here to in the middle of this second this excuse me, this middle of this third quarter of play. And it is as you know, it is opening night here at Mustang Stadium, first home football game of the year. Mustangs and North Hills both had wins last week to start their seasons, both in section play. The Mustangs went to Hempfield and defeated the Hempfield Spartans 45 to 19 last week. And the North Hills Indians defeated division rival Fox Chapel Foxes by the score of 35 to seven last Friday. North Hills will be at home next week against the Butler Golden Tornadoes. And the Mustangs next week will be at home against Altoona in their second section game of the year. Here's a handoff for Coxon. He moves forward. He'll get some positive yards on that play. It will be second down coming up. A little pushing and shoving after the play there from both teams. They're gonna spot the ball to 28. Give Coxon three yards, second down and seven from the 28 yard line. 
Guys, we said earlier too, this is KDKA's featured game of the week, CVS Pittsburgh's local game of the week, high school game of the week. And another big matchup tonight in the Northern Eight Conference, the section uh, North Hills is in. Pine Richland and North Allegheny were playing in a matchup tonight. Fierro's gonna throw, gets to the outside. It's gonna be caught by Turchik. Turchik bullies his way for a first down. Good play by Fuhrer to get it to Turchik. Turchik gets enough for the first down and a little bit more. Give him 10 yards on the catch. Tackle was made by two Eddie McDonough. Mustangs advance the ball to their own 38 yard line. Now slowly and steadily moving this ball downfield looking for their first score of the evening. And Logan, I, in spot I think you can agree with me here. This is, either way Mustangs need to get a score here because it'd be big for them. Coxon gets to the outside. He'll cut back inside to the 43 yard line again. Mustangs moving the ball well, running it. He'll get four yards, it'll be second down and six. Adam Hockmeister there for the tackle for the North Hills Indians. Still a little bit hot, but it is significantly cooled down since the sun's gone down here at Mustang Stadium. It's been a hot one. Mustangs in their black uniforms, North Hills in their red and white away uniforms. Second down and six. Fuhrer takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Fuhrer's gonna throw. Fuhrer is looking for someone. Fuhrer's gonna run to the outside and try to get some yardage. He'll get some positive yardage. Good play by Fuhrer there to escape the pocket. He had no one open. So a good play by Fuhrer to move the ball forward and bit by bit, Mustangs keep looking for another first down. Give Fuhrer two yards on the carry. And it'll be third down and a short three from their own 45 yard line. They have to get to their own 48 for a first down. There is 3.08 on the clock in the third quarter of play. Mustang still trailing the Indians 17 to nothing. Zach Nolan in motion. There's a snap. Fuhrer takes it. Fuhrer's going to throw. Pass is completed up the middle to Ashton Teeter. Mustangs are in Indians territory to the 43 yard line. Teeter's second grab of the day and it's good for another Mustangs first down. And Logan next to me pumping his fist because it is a big first down. Huge first down. This drive has been huge for the Mustangs so far. Hopefully they keep going further and keeping the momentum strong and keep moving the chains. Mustangs slowly and steadily moving the ball down the field. It's been working this drive. Fuhrer takes the snap. Handoff for Cox and up the middle. He'll get some more positive yardage. Mustangs continue to move the ball up the middle. They'll get to the 40 yard line. It'll be a gain of three, second down and seven. And an underrated stat here, guys. I know you'll agree with me here. Mustangs are three for three on third down conversions on this drive, and third down conversions can make or break a game for you. Especially on a drive as important as this. Down 17 nothing. It's an easy touchdown away from getting right back into this game. Absolutely. Second down and seven from the 40. Mustangs need to get to the North Hills 33-yard line for a first down. Two minutes and counting here in this third quarter. Fuhrer's going to throw. He's going to look for his receiver up the middle. Patrick Crossy with the catch to the 23-yard line. Again, a fantastic, a fantastically placed ball by Will Fuhrer up the middle for a Mustangs first down. It's gonna be a 17 yard pass play and it's Crossy's second catch of the evening. Mustangs are in field goal range for Chapla. Like we said, any score here on this drive for the Mustangs will cut it to a two possession game. Mustangs methodically moving the ball down the field on this drive. First down, Fuhrer hands it off to Cox up the middle. He bullies his way up the middle. And he is officially in the Heinz red zone. For the first time this evening, the Mustangs are in the Heinz red zone. Make sure you get your thick and rich Heinz ketchup. Any place ketchup is sold. Maybe at a Plum supermarket to support your local businesses here in Plum. 
Mustangs are at the 18 yard line. It was like eight a five, second down and five. One minute and counting left in this third quarter of play. Fuhrer takes the snap, five wide. Pass will be thrown incomplete, batted down by 36, Michael Danko. And we have a flag on the play thrown by the side judge. And we're seeing the head official. Let's see what the official calls here. It's gonna be a personal foul on the North Hills Indians and boy, that helps the Mustangs out. Matt Morgan is infuriated on the sideline right now for the Mustangs. Now, it can't be a 15 yard penalty since they're inside the 20 yard line. It'll be half the distance to the goal line for the Mustangs. They were just at the 18 yard line. It'll move them up to the nine yard line and it will be first down and goal for the Mustangs looking for their first score of the evening and to put themselves right back in this game. 48.4 seconds left in this third quarter. Fears in the pistol, takes the snap, handoff for Coxon, he'll get to the outside, up the middle. He gets to the two yard line. Coxon gets six yards. Mustangs setting themselves up right now. 35 seconds and counting in our third quarter of play. Nick Coxon doing a great job of moving the team down on the run game this, this drive. Boy, he's gotta be close to 100 yards again this game. He had 137 last week against Hempfield. He's gotta be close to a two. It'd be good if the Mustangs could score here before the end of the third quarter. Fuhrer, handoff, Turchik. There's a flag on the play. And there will be 7.7 .7 seconds left in this third quarter of play. It was a flag before Fuhrer handed the ball off, but it was after the ball was snapped. We will see what the call is. Turchik was the ball carrier there. It's gonna be an illegal shift on the Mustangs. It'll back them up five yards to the seven yard line. It'll be second down and goal from the seven with 7.7 7 seconds left. As the clock restarts, and that is going to be the end of the third quarter of play here at Plum. Mustangs are setting themselves up to score. When we come back, we'll see them. They're on the North Hill seven yard line looking to get a score and cut this North Hills deficit. Right now, we had no scoring in the third quarter, so it remains North Hills 17 and Plum 0 as we go to start the fourth quarter. Keep it here with us here on the Plum Mustang Sports Network, brought to you by Plum TV. Let's talk about that last penalty and how it can take an effect. Well, it. I was going to ask you too, how how much does that put an effect on your team, especially on defense after someone creates, excuse me, a dumb foul, like an elite, like, you know, like a personal foul after the player on sportsmanlike like conduct? Well, see, I think that North Hills is getting aggravated. They can't stop us. And so with, with this penalty, I mean, I don't... I'm not gonna say it's like a game changer, right. but it, it was a dumb foul. Should have happened. So Mustangs are in good field position to start this off though, because of that. I'd like to welcome back to the headset your lead play-by-play -play last year. Did a fantastic job. He's now a communications major at Robert Morris. Bobby Moe, as he likes to call it. I'd like to welcome back my friend, my pal, Ian Kist. Welcome back to Plum. 
We've been talking before school's been well at Bobby Moe. Your thoughts so far on tonight's game? I need your input. Well, I thought Plum's defense looked pretty sharp um, all around, especially in the first quarter, uh, first half. You know, unfortunate they got the, how the North Hills got their first touchdown on the guy not being tackled and thinking that he was tackled. But you know, Plum threatening here with um, fresh new quarter. You know, they got two more downs to try to put the ball through the uh, past the line. So let's see what Plum, what play they go through in their playbook. Ian's right, it's a second down and goal from the eight yard line, Fear under center. They're going to hand it off. No, they're not. Good play action well, fake. Fear is looking to throw. He's going to throw for the end zone. It is going to be caught. And it is going to be oh, not a right. touchdown. It'll be down at the one yard line, even the half yard line. Will Fear escape the pressure and found the receiver, Patrick Crossy, who is a foot short of the end zone there, Ian. It looked like Crossy's feet might have been in the end zone, but the ball wasn't. So the ball needs to pass the Correct. goal line to be a touchdown, I think that's what the call was. Nonetheless here, you would think this is two down territory from where they're at, they're at the half foot mark. Yeah. It's third down and goal, Mustangs looking for a big touchdown here to get themselves right back in the game here in the fourth quarter. Fear under center, he will keep it. Fear is going to be No official word yet. Clock is stopped. A touchdown! Will Fuhrer will sneak it into the end zone. It's a one yard touchdown rush. And the Mustangs are right back in this game right now. It is 17 to six, barring the extra point from Chapla. And if that's not huge, I don't know what a huge play is right there, but Will Fuhrer took it himself right in the end zone to give the Mustangs their first score of the evening and get themselves right back in the game, guys. What a drive, what a drive. Great running by Nick Coxon, great plays at the end. And of course, the penalty, the, the lucky call, the lucky penalty, he's, uh, he's, he's got to say dumb foul call against North Hills to set him up in the scoring position and a great run by Will Fuhrer to cap it off. Extra point will be coming from Jake Chapla, who is six for six on the year for extra points. We do have a stoppage in play. Matt Morgan is upset about something, the head coach for the Mustangs. Uh, they're putting 11, mi 11 minutes and four seconds back onto the clock. So that puts 11.04, yes, Ian, 11.04 now on the clock. Which six seconds, who knows, in this type of game, how yeah. close this game is, that could mean a lot. You know what's big after this extra point and kickoff? A big stoppage and hold. Hopefully get North Hills three and out. Get the ball back real quick. Don't kill, make sure North Hills doesn't kill much time off the clock. And so you have time to make up to at least another touchdown, depending on this, if, if this extra point's good or not. Chapla on for the extra point. Snap is good, kick is up, and he nails it, it is good. And it is almost out of the stadium, he boomed it. As I like to call him, neon shoes, Jake Chapla. Nails the extra point, and with 11-3 left in this fourth quarter of play, the Mustangs and the Indians are in a tight one. It is 17-7 Indians right now leading the Mustangs. Touchdown on the field goal. Makes it seem a little easier in the hands of Plum. They got that first touchdown, first score under their belt. Use that momentum. Force a fumble, force a, a bad throw, get an interception. And this game will be turned around for the Mustangs. Out behind the end zone, we have a good game of, I believe, soccer going on between all the North Hills kids. A lot, a lot of their fans, a lot of brothers and sisters have come to support 
They're obviously brothers and sisters playing for North Hills, playing a good game of soccer, looks like, out there, right behind the end zone. Now, we'd like to remind you of a safety precaution they do here at Plum. You are not allowed to cross the center of the field onto the other side if you're from North Hills or Plum to refrain from fighting. That's been a rule here at Plum for a, quite a long time, especially with section opponents. And you don't want to see fights, especially Logan and I have seen a couple fights that haven't been very good. Kickoff by Chapel. It's a booming kick, and it's going to be out of the end zone, out of Andrew Bly's hands. PIA rule states that once the ball is kicked out of the end zone or into the end zone and is received by the wide receiver or returner, therefore it's automatically ruled as a touchback. Therefore the ball will be placed on the 20 yard line and it will be a first down and 10 coming up for the North Hills Indians. Marching band just did their touchdown celebration doing seven push-ups to go along with all the points scored so far for the Mustangs. Do you do you guys think North Hills will continue to run the football and get this clock burned down a little bit more? Yeah, because they have a 10 point lead with gonna be under 11 minutes. All they're looking to do right now is kill, kill the time. One yard gain by Santucci at the middle, but there is a flag after the play was over. Turchik on the tackle. It was a flag after the play. It is going to be on the offense of North Hills. It'll be a holding. Back North Hills up to their own 10 yard line. It'll be first down and 20 from their own 10. And that's a big penalty, hey, Logan and Ian. They look frustrated, North Hills offense. A lot of flags tonight, guys. A lot going against North Hills. I am, I, we have seen a lot of flags tonight. And Mr. Brott, you can, you can chime in here now too. How big was that holding call against North Hills right there in terms of what they need to do on this drive? You know, it'd be interesting to see what Coach Carey does. I, I would expect he'd want to keep the ball on the ground a little bit to eat up some clock, but we'll see. Fly in motion. And he's gonna pass. He's gonna pass, he is looking for a receiver and he is going to oh! almost throw it in the hands of number five, Kevin Brown on the coverage, but it is an incomplete pass, and Bruder was close to being tackled in the end zone for a safety. That was a split second from being a total disaster for the Indians. Should be very fortunate, and again, I would be surprised if Coach Carey put it up in the air now. Second and 20, you wanna run the ball, kill time. and you wanna kill at least the next 30, 40 seconds here. You have to. If he puts it up in the air again and it's incomplete, Plum might get the ball with 10 minutes to go at midfield in great position here. He has to play close to the vest, but quarterback is running out of the gun. Yes, he is. Bruder's in the shotgun, and they're, they're going to do the motion play with the receiver, Kendall Taylor. That's his first carry of the day, but the Mustang shut him down on the corner. Looks like number 14, senior captain Andrew Soxman there with the tackle. And coming up is a big third down and 19. Did keep the clock running though. Uh, he, did, he, wasn't a, he wasn't able to uh, get tackled out of bounds. So 10-20 left to go. Not okay. to interrupt, you still think they'll run the ball here on third and 19, do you? I would, there's no doubt about it. This is a big third down here with 10 minutes and counting to go in this game. Mustangs trailing 17 to seven. Motion play, and the quarterback will keep it, but it is totally not enough. He did get some positive yardage, but tackle was made by 85, Zach Nolan. It's gonna be a fourth down and 14 coming up for the North Hills Indians as they give Bruder a carry of five yards. They will punt from their eight, own 18 yard line back to receive for the Mustangs is Patrick Crossy. The punter is McDonough. He gets it off, it's a high booming kick. Crossy's gonna fair catch it. At the 43 yard line. Our Plum Boys sure know how to make this game interesting. Yes, they do, and we have 9.29 remaining in this game. Mustangs in great field position as they are still trailing to the North Hills Indians by a score of 17 to seven. This crowd is back into it. The North Hills student section has depleted their sound a little bit since the Plum touchdown. They were real loud earlier, They yes. were absolutely loud, and the Plum marching band 
doing a fantastic job as well. Currently right now the Mustang ends in playing. It's gonna be first down and 10 from the Mustangs 43 yard line. Handoff, Cox up the middle. Good stop by the Indians there. I couldn't see who got in on that. Yeah, I see a number. It is going to be. It is going to be 44. Alec Thomas and 24. Carmen Taylor was in on the play too. Correction, that's Cameron Taylor. Sorry about that, folks. Cameron Taylor there also in on the play. It'll be second down and a, a long eight. Mustangs are on their own 44 and a half yard line. Would like to see that middle screen. I would too here. Handoff for Cox, and again, gets to the outside, and he will stay on his feet, get some more positive yardage. Looks like a gain of two and a half. It's gonna be a third down here coming up for the Mustangs. Third and four, looks like five. Five, third and five. Third and five. You gotta, you gotta talk also All now, Ed. Uh, we are under 8.20 left to go. Um, I wonder if it's two down territory. That is good thinking right there. We don't know what Matt Morgan could do here. Depends on what they do on this play right here, especially. Third and five, Fuhrer is gonna throw. He is going to look Open. and Ooh. almost find his receiver. That was intended for 81, Patrick Crossy. Pass is incomplete, it's gonna be fourth down. Looks like they're, they're going to keep the Mustang offense on the field. It's going to be fourth down and six. No correction, fourth down and five. Mustangs got to get to, Mustangs have to get to the 47 yard line of North Hills. The clock is frozen at 8.04 remaining. Well, I'm sure throughout the broadcast, we said this is a big play, this is a big play. Guess what? This is an even bigger it's a one. Bigger play. Yeah, this is a bigger <laughs> play. Good call, Ian. Bigger play. 8.04 left, plumb down by 10. Fourth quarter, Mustangs need a first or it will be a turnover on down. Fuhrer in the pistol. And oh no, three flags come out. Start. Looked like a little movement there in a Plum offensive line, so that can change, definitely change the play call. Um, goes against Plum, it will be fourth and 10. It's gonna be a false start on the offense and now here comes the punt team. Have As to do it. It's a good call by Coach Morgan because if you turn the ball over, this uh, deep field. Yeah, you're Almost. gonna have to hope you get no, and not a good return by the Indians and hold them to three plays and start back over around the 40 or 50. But you've, Plum has now put themselves in a possession, gentlemen, that if they're gonna get two possessions left, they have to score them both. That's the bottom line. It'll be fourth down and 11. Snap is low for Nolan, but he gets a line drive kickoff. Nice bounce. And it will, it will take a nice bounce. Real and nice Zach bounce. Nolan. Still rolling. Look at this bounce for Zach oh, Nolan. Past the 10 yard line. And that is huge. The Mustangs push North Hills back to the nine yard line. We saw the last time the Mustangs pushed North Hills back this far. We almost saw a pick six. The Mustangs really like these pressure situations on defense as we've seen all year. Who does not like to be in a big pressure situation on defense? but we have 7.51 remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Mustangs trailing the North Hills Indians by the score of 17 to seven. Nice night here for the opening night of football here. Describe what you mean by nice. I'm hope, I hope you're not referring to the heat. I am not because, referring to the heat. Because <laughs> our press box is 20 degrees hotter than it is two feet in yeah. front of us outside. Absolutely. Ian, do you agree with that since you came from outside right now? Yeah, it's, it's pretty hot in here. Well, to be fair, it did get a lot cooler throughout the day. It did get a lot cooler, but it hit coal hasn't dropped in here there, Logan. And the <laughs> rain has held off, knock on wood with that, but the rain has held off for now. Sure, absolutely, Jake. So this is a huge possession for the North Hills Indians to try to contain some clock. Handoff, Santucci has the outside, and Santucci has a hole up the middle. It's gonna be Nick Santucci, and he's gonna get to the 46-yard line, make it the 40, 
And you know why that, play, that play is developed. One of the Plum Defenders guys went for the strip and just missed it. And Santucci was able to hold on to the ball and just shot out like a bolt of lightning through that first containment. And that was a, a huge gain of almost 40 yards. First down and 10 from the 45 yard line. That was a carry of 37 yards. Santucci, a nice move again up the middle. What's happening now is Plum's defense has been on the field a lot longer than the offense. And with seven minutes to go, we're almost at the halfway point of the fourth quarter. They might be getting winded. I hope I'm wrong, but they might be getting winded. Well, this has been a running back game today. Big nights both for Coxon and Santucci. And I would be surprised if, if North Hills threw a ball here. Handoff. Santucci has enough for the first down. Tackle made there by 35. Zach Martin gain a seven for Santucci, and it's going to be another North Hills first down. Also, Pat Crossy in on the tackle here. And now what North Hills has done with their last several first downs is they have actually rotated the field now. So um, if they don't get another first down and they do punt, they're going to force Plum to drive the whole length of the field with probably under five minutes to go. First down and 10. Ball on the 43-yard line. Davis, the tight end in motion. Snap. Bruder will hand it off for Santucci. And honestly, I would continue to run the ball to Santucci. I would run it to him on second down, third down. If it was fourth and one, I'd run it to him. But I think we're going to see a lot of him now for the last half of this fourth quarter. I agree. We'd like to report a view of an injury that occurred. We don't know when. 85, Zach Nolan is getting checked out by the trainer and stretched on the sideline. His return to the game is questionable. Davis in motion. Play clock down to one. Bruder gets the snap off in time. Santucci at the middle will be brought down. Here comes a third down coming up. 64, Eric Trends there was a tackle. Good tackle by Eric. Um, if he, if Santu was that Santucci that ran it? Yes, Santucci, Santucci ran it. Santucci breaks out of Eric's leg tackle there. He probably has another first down. So uh, Plum, bottom line is, guys, Plum has to stop North Hills here and force a punt. And if they do, they'll probably get the ball with 415, 420 left in the fourth quarter. Do you think this is two down territory for North Hills? If they make it fourth and one, yes. If it's fourth and two or three, they'll take another 25 seconds off, punt the ball. Bruder runs to the left, flag on the play, pass will be completed for now. For a first down, that is Kendall Taylor again with the catch. Came from the side, Judge. Start. It's going to be a false start on North Hills. That'll back them up five yards, and it'll be a third down and 10. And that's a huge penalty against North Hills. Take away that third down conversion. They'll have to try again. And I'm surprised they actually threw the ball there, Jake. Me so, too. Uh, I am too. Be interesting what they, I mean, me personally, I'd run the ball, and you might be able to drag it under four minutes and have Plum drive the length of the field. And that play there stops the clock, too, at 4.48 left in this game. Score is still North Hill 17, Plum 7. Third down and 10 from the 43-yard line of Plum. And they're going to hand it off. Santucci up the middle. And he will have enough for the first down. Santucci runs it for a 10-yard, 11-yard gain to the 32-yard line, and that's a big third down conversion for the North Hills Indians. And the Indians can probably at this time now take another two minutes, two and a half yep. minutes. So Plum's gonna need a turnover here to 
have any luck to get back in this game, unfortunately. And it's still a very valiant effort by the Mustangs. 17-7 to one of the better teams in the Whitfield, North Hills Indians. Bruder will keep it. He's in the backfield. He's going to try to get stopped. He will run out of bounds and stop the and clock. Stop the clock. <laughs> and he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage to the 32-yard line. It'll be second down and 10. Four fourteen is frozen on the clock right now. Maybe for plum's sake, he'll throw a pass. He'll be incomplete. Now only four or five seconds will go off the clock. Mustangs have all three timeouts remaining too, which they will probably need on the drive. Correct. Hand off Santucci, and he will leap forward. Santucci, the ball carrier. Get two, clock has been stopped. Plum has just called timeout, yes. Jake. Timeout Mustangs, one yard gain for Santucci. It'll be a third down and nine, and I'm thinking here, it's a big third down. The Mustangs might be setting up their defense here for a big third down. Clock is frozen at 4.08. Timeout Mustangs. Give you a little pit update again here. Pitt currently leads with a minute left in the third quarter. The score is still 20 to seven over the Boston College Eagles. North Hills marching band has done a fantastic job tonight under the direction of Len Lavelle. Also the cheerleaders over there have done a fantastic job cheerleader sponsor coach is Diane Maciosi. Third and eight, 408 left to go in the fourth quarter. Indian 17, Mustang seven. Another th big third down here. I think he's gonna pass. Looks like it, he's in the shotgun. He's got trips to the left. He's gonna pass, or it'll be a quarterback sneak. And to the left of him is 46, Ben Walter, who we've seen play middle linebacker. He's gonna run. For, he's gonna throw, pass. he's gonna air it out, incomplete. and the clock is stopped. That's it is an incomplete pass. You do that, you know what, I, I'm confused with that. I mean, I, me personally, you only do that play if you're gonna go for it on fourth down. I don't, yeah. and uh, Santucci's not off the field yet. My, I think the punter's back gone. I think they're gonna go for it, Jake. I think they are gonna go for it. And yes, head coach Pat Carey is sending his quarterback out there. And it does not put the, if the Mustangs stop him here, they're not in terrible field position either. 31 yard line. Four, with 4.02 left. Again, he has that fullback and inside linebacker Ben Walter to his right, he's gonna run. And he is gonna uh -oh. escape to the side and he's gonna get a blocker, but he, no, he's not gonna get enough. Big stop for the Mustangs defense. Tackle was made by 70. Uh, I believe it's Mike Simboli, it is Simboli with the stop and they lose three yards on the play and get Plum at the 35 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for this high octane Plum Mustangs offense who put up 45 points last week. Ian. Bruder. Looked like he ran into one of his linemen or receivers, so he had to reroute his path to run the opposite way and then got entrapped and literally had nowhere to go. Yeah, I don't understand that. If you punt the ball, even if it goes in the end zone, plum starting at the 20, you're yeah. under four minutes. If you if you punt it out of bounds, they got to drive 80, 90, 95 yards. I don't get that. Fear will throw out of a shotgun. He's going to look. He's going to air it out oh, deep. He has, he has a receiver. Ashton Teeter. It is caught, and it is a play. Touchdown! He airs it out for Ashton Teeter. It is a 65-yard touchdown pass. And talk about high-octane offense. It's one play, and it's six points for the Mustangs as they cut this possibly to a three-point game with 3.42 left in this game. We cannot state how big 
that play was. And we're all laughing now because one play and one score. And I'm, I'm assuming, what do you guys think? Kick is up, kick is good. Onside the, kick. The Mustangs have cut the North Hills lead to three. It is now North Hills 17, Plum 14. There is a ton of time left in this game, 342 remaining. Plum will kick it off to the North Hills. Quick thought, guys, any thought of an onside kick right yeah, here? No, absolutely yeah. not. Punt it or kick it deep and pin him deep. And Chapel's got the leg to kick it through the end zone, too. Big, big key, keep the defense on the field. Put, put the defense on the field for the Mustangs that we've seen all night. And they're going to get the ball back with Anything two minutes left? Within two minutes left in the game. And Plum has two timeouts remaining? Yes, correct. So that will, um, they have that in their pocket as well. So here comes Neon Shoe Jake Chapla out for the kickoff. This game just got more intensified. The Mustangs have scored 14 unanswered points to cut this to a three point game. It's North Hill 17, Plum 14, 342 left. Back to return for North Hills is Andrew Bly. Plum is down to two timeouts. There's no two minute warning in high school. Chapla ready to boot it and it is off and it is a booming kick. Bly will return from the two yard line and the Mustangs will get to him at around the 30. Good play by the Mustangs special teams to cut him down to the 30 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 from the 30, 335 remaining in this game. Mustangs down three. You know, I'm kind of interested to see what North Hills goes with here because last drive they made a couple questionable calls with a couple passes and a, a run outside that ended up going out of bounds and stopping the clock. You run Santucci and you run yeah. him again and you run him again, unless he had stopped for no gain. Here we go, big drive and a big possession here for the Mustangs on defense. Hand off for Santucci on the outside and he is going to be stopped. Whoosh. Bill Irvin and Nick Poprocky the first to get to him. And it's gonna be a loss of six on the play. It pushes North Hills back to the 25 yard line. Matt Morgan elects not to take his time out right now, which is a smart play because yeah, it's a that. loss Let of it six. Go. Use it if you have the ball back. You know, if they throw a pass here and it's incomplete, yeah. the clock's gonna stop with like 250, 240 left, and it's gonna be third and a mile, so. It is pushed back second down and 15 from the 27 yard line. Play clock down to five. Wagner in motion, there's the snap. Hand off for Santucci, he slips and falls. And he is touched first. Now I've called timeout. And there is a timeout. Matt Morgan calls a timeout. Mustangs have one remaining. Good call. Those North Hills fans are stunned. Well, Ian, this is probably the 18th biggest play of the game coming up right now. <laughs> so um, let's set the table for everyone, for everyone that's listening and watching the broadcast. 2.46 left to go in the fourth quarter. Plum with a huge touchdown a minute ago. Down by three to the North Hills Indians, 17-14. Third and scoreboard says 16 and five, 10, 10, 10. I agree with that. Third and 16 at the 26 yard line. They're calling it 16. It's around 15 and a half. No, I they're going to call, they're gonna call it 16 though. North Hills has to get to the 41 yard line. It's going to be in the air. Yeah, what do you expect you know, here? So I think they should, most things should expect that. Go to pass. Yeah. Well, you have to pass because if you run Plum, it, well, if you do run though, you'll force Plum probably to use their last time out because if they don't, it will go, the clock will probably go to under two minutes. So I so think that's go it. to pass and see what happens. Crowd getting up and stopping on the bleachers. It is loud here at Mustang Stadium. 2.46 remaining, a big third down and 16. He will throw, Bruder's gonna go deep. He has a receiver, it will be incomplete. 
Intended for number seven, Kendall Taylor, Andrew Soxman, Zach Martin, and Nick Robb. All three seniors stepping up with a big play. And it's another three and out for North Hills. And, now, and we'll force a punt. Chapla will yeah. warm up. Mustangs, his field goal range, they gotta get to around the 25 yard line. He has yeah. a big leg. They need to get where the ball is right now. Correct. See Pat Crossy back to receive. Mustangs do have one timeout remaining and a lot of time, 239. Madonna with the kick. It's a deep one. Crossy will let it go. It's gonna take uh, um, kind of a yeah. neutral bounce, but North Hills will down it at the 32 yard line with 226 remaining in this game. Mustangs not in bad field position. Again, we'll tell you again, Chapla's range they could even get to the 30-yard line, but a good chance would get to the 25-yard line for a, a good field goal attempt. And this game is a good exa pure example of you don't stop playing until the game's over. You know, there's a lot of fans leaving, you know, on North Hill, the side and that, and it's like, Mustangs are in until the end. That. So you, you stay, all these Mustangs fans are staying until there's zeros on that clock. First down and 10 for the 31. Fury will take the snap. He's going to throw. Go to the sideline. It's going to be caught by Patrick Crossy. Crossy. He escapes Still a defender. Crossy leaps forward to the 40-yard line. It'll uh, be a nine-yard completion. This is under down and one. Jake, who's number three for North Hills? When he got up, he just kicked Pat right in the face. So Andrew great. Bly. That is Andrew Bly, who has had a touchdown and a on purpose and blatant. That should have been a 15-yard I saw penalty. Pat look at him and yeah, like he, a what? Because he yeah. got kicked in the face. Yeah, he was clock ticking. Play, yeah. A minute 56 to go. 40 seconds, or excuse me, they're on the 40 yard line with a minute 50 to go. Second and one, Fury will throw. Looking for someone to pass to, he'll escape, he'll run up the middle. Fury is going to get the first down to the 44 yard line. Clock Therefore, clock the, do they place the ball, Jake? Correct, they, it's just like college rules, the clock stops until the chains have been set and the referee gives the okay to start the clock. Mustangs are at the 44 yard line now. We need about 30 yards to get into field goal range. Clock has now started a minute 40 and counting. Fuhrer takes the snap, it's low. He still gains the ball though. Fuhrer will throw, it is going to be incomplete. I think that ball slipped out of his hand. Yes guys. it did, almost Fury. caught by Eddie McDonough for North Hills. Clock stops at second down and 10 with a minute 27 left in this game. Mustangs still have one timeout remaining. They're probably going to use it conservatively here with them only being down a field goal. Mustangs with four wideouts. Coxon is behind Fuhrer, second down and 10. There's a snap, Fuhrer will throw. There's a little bit of pressure, he escapes. Ball is loose, it is an incomplete pass. The referee immediately called it. Fuhrer was probably held back with the shoulder and he followed through. Therefore, it's a pass attempt and it's incomplete. And it brings up a third down and 10. And it's not a doubt, it's two down territory right here for the Mustangs. Yeah, now when you make, when it's third and 10, the clock's not a concern. There's 121 left to go. You gotta get the first down. You, Correct. Need, you need four downs, not two. Pat Carey trying to get the attention of someone on the sideline. They had an extra man on the field, but the referees did not see it. Third and 10, Fuhrer to throw. He's going to find Hubner, but it's in and out of his hands for an incomplete pass. Well, this is the 19th biggest play of the game coming up. Bottom line here, guys. Plum needs a first down or the game is over. One timeout left. Minute 16. Plum has to get a first down. But what a great game right now, no matter which way this goes. 17-14. Plum and the North Hills Indians have had a true battle tonight. Mustangs have a fourth and 10 
from their own 44 yard line. Play clock down to five. Here's the snap, is gonna throw, it's a blitz. blitz. Fuhrer is going to stay on his feet, get to the side, and he will be sat at the 32 yard line. 44, Alec Thomas there on the play. Great. He will sack Fuhrer. Great play called by Pat Carey and the North Hills Indians. They blitz Will Fuhrer there, and he just had no time to look downfield, and that will be all, that will be the end of the game there. Minute eight left to go, turnover on downs by the Mustangs. North Hills will take over, guys, and they'll just have to take a knee. But what a great game by, what a great game by the Mustang. We knew this Mustang team had a lot of willpower in them. A lot of people will count you out when it's a 17 to nothing game to start the fourth quarter. But these Mustangs can tell everyone we play to the last second of the game. North Hills has the ball on the 32. They're gonna just try to run the clock out. It is Santucci to the 30. And Matt Morgan will call his final timeout. And we'd like to mention now too, the Mustangs have had 14 unanswered points here with a minute left. And have allowed all 17 points in the second quarter. Other than that, there have been zeros up on the board for the North Hills Indians. You know, Plum dominated, I thought, pretty much. Ah, dominated might be a strong word. I thought Plum had the better of play in the first quarter, quarter and a half. And then North Hills just steamrolled, you know, on that, on that busted play at the, our 45-yard line. But after that, it's been from the back half of the third quarter and the fourth quarter has been all Plum. And they're going to probably, I imagine, run it again with a minute two left. Plum cannot stop the clock now. Handoff. Santucci will get to the 25-yard line and be down. Be third and two, maybe three. Some extracurricular activity after the play, too. Now, they'll have to run one more play. Correct. I think they have one timeout left, right, Jake? North Hills is one timeout left. And I think what Coach Carey's gonna do now is just let it go down for another 10 seconds, taking the clock down to 16 or 17. Call the timeout. You know what they could even do here, it's, and they might, they probably might do it. They might kneel here, because Plum has no way to stop the clock. But if they kneel with a knee down, it automatically, I mean, that should be it, right? Right, it's, yeah. no, it will be it, because there is 15.6 seconds left. The play clock on a play is 25 seconds. Folks, make sure to stay tuned after the final horn has rang. We will get post-game analysis on the Rudy Sub post-game show. Neon Knight here at Plum Senior High School. North Hills will run one final play here to run the clock down. This game here does not affect Plum in their section standings. Neither North Hills does either. It would be a non-conference win on the schedule for the North Hills if the score stands. And they have number three, Andrew Bly, all the way back at the Plum 45 yard line. And they are in the victory formation. And Bruder will probably sit on it. And he will. And that will be our ball game. And this crowd of Plum will give this team a standing ovation because a heck of a game was just played by this Mustang team. We have been not only impressed with this Mustang team over the first two weeks, it's been excellent to broadcast these first two weeks of games, and we're off to a fantastic year of plum football. Our final score here at Mustang Stadium in Plum in this non-conference quad A game is the North Hills Indians 17 and the Plum Mustangs 14. 
great game by both these teams. Well coached head coach Pat Carey from the North Hills Indians and head coach Matt Morgan for the Mustangs. The storyline of this game, North Hills scoring 17 points in the second quarter to take a 17-0 lead at halftime. Plum scored 14 unanswered, featuring a 65-yard touchdown pass from Will Fuhrer to Ashton Teeter to cut it to a 17-14 game. I'd like to get post-game thoughts. I'd like to start with my pal, Ian Kist. Wait, wait, time out. I didn't know you were friends with him. <laughs> but go ahead, Ian. I'm sorry. I hate to interrupt, but go ahead. Um, great example of, you know, don't quit until the game's over, you know? Um, anything happened, like that big play, um, the will to his receiver, uh, Teeter, I believe, and, um, you know, the heart this team had, the he down 17 nothing, got in the fourth quarter, you know, playing a good first half, and then going in at halftime, losing 17 nothing, and then coming back out, no score in the third quarter, and then scoring 14 points and making this um, a nail biter and um, a good game, and got the fans involved, and it's a good game, you know, be back. Thanks for being back this with us. Team's gonna, this team's gonna do well this season. Thank you, Ian. Logan Carney, you had a very exciting first game to broadcast. I need your thoughts on tonight's 17-14 tough loss. Well, I'd first like to say, don't worry, Jake, you're my pal, <laughs> even though you didn't say that to me. But oh, you are, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, they, Mustangs today showed, just like you know, Ian said, they showed a lot of heart, a lot of heart. To, go, to like, come into the second half losing 17 nothing, and to get two touchdowns, on what were obviously good plays, and to put yourselves in a chance in a chance to win is just huge and a huge boost for this Mustang. And I expect good things coming forward. Mr. Barat, your thoughts on the, this evening's performance? You know, even though Plum came out on the short end, I think from a confidence standpoint, and you hate to say the word moral victory. But Plum has proven and they have shown not only the student body and the fans and also the, you know, the, the powers to be in the Whippeal, if they are going to make the playoffs, they are, going, they are a good team. And they can hang with the so-called quote-unquote big boys in the WPIL. North Hills came in here and they were probably thinking honestly in the back of their mind, oh Plum, it'll probably be 35-42 nothing in halftime. It was 17 nothing. They thought they were gonna probably roll in the second half and it got real close, real quick and they held on by the skin of their teeth. Great job by Coach Morgan and great job by Coach Morgan and the entire Plum team and looking forward to Altoona. Curious to see if they upset it, um, upset it McKeesport tonight. And if they did, that's gonna be a great game here next week. Thanks guys. The next seven games for the Plum Mustangs are section games, which is the remaining of the schedule for now. Mustangs have seven section games. They'll have four home games, three away games. I'd like to do the final line score of plays Brought to you by Plum TV. The first score of the game, Andrew Bly ran it in for a touchdown from 50 yards. They then had a pass play for Brandon Wagner to get in the end zone. It was 14, nothing. North Hills added a 39 yard field goal to the Mustangs in the fourth quarter. Got a one yard touchdown run by Will Fuhrer, followed by a 65 yard touchdown pass from Will Fuhrer to Ashton Teeter to connect this to a 17 14 game but unfortunately the Mustangs are unable to score on their final drive to even win or tie this game. On behalf of myself, Nick Satovich, Anthony Lagnis, Ian Kist, Logan Carney, Cam Kutzner, Matty Beer Temple, and the real deal himself, Mr. Rick Barat. I am Jake Batolo saying good night from Plum High School. We will see you next week at seven o'clock. The Mustangs take on a section opponent in Altoona. Thanks guys. Good night everybody. Good night.